guys, it's Catherine, and if you've watched my videos before, you know that I am really big on memory planning or memory keeping or whatever you want to call it. Instead of using my planner to plan ahead, I like to use my planner to record our memories. So I incorporate a lot of pictures every week and I write about what we do each day. I write about TV shows that I watch and stuff like that. It's kind of like a hybrid of scrapbooking and planning. So I have just been having a lot of fun with that and I find that each month that passes by that I digital plan, I find more and more ways to get creative with it. So today I wanted to show you guys how to embellish some of your photos in Procreate. So I've been writing on pictures for a while just because I feel like it looks really nice with my layouts. And now I've found other ways to embellish some photographs. So I'm going to share with you in this video how you can add a background to a photograph like I've done in these pictures while the person in the picture will still show up and pop out. So I do all of this in Procreate. So I'm just going to open the Procreate app. And here's a good example of what we're going to be doing. This is my daughter and you'll see that I've added all of these hearts around her and you'll even see where some of the hearts are cut off right here, but she still stands out and she's not covered, but the rest of the photo that's not really relevant that I didn't want to crop is covered in this hand-drawn background. So I'm going to go to my gallery and I'm going to start a new canvas and we can just do a screen size canvas. That's totally fine. And now I'm going to bring in a picture. So I'm going to insert a photo from my camera roll and I'm going to do this picture of my son right here that I took a few days ago. Okay, so you can crop photos down a little bit. You can make them whatever dimension you need to make them. I'm going to skip that step. I'm just going to use what we have here. And the photo, when you import it into Procreate, it'll automatically be selected and you'll know that it's selected because it has this moving box around it. So to deselect it, I am going to click on this arrow right here. And now it's been deselected and we can go to our layers and we'll see that this photograph is layer number one and we're currently on layer number one and that's what we want. So now we're just going to zoom in and basically we're going to just trace Maddox, my son. Um, so in your case, you would just trace the person in the photograph. So to do that, we need to use our selection tool. So the selection tool is this ribbon right here. So you just click on that and then come down here and select freehand. And now we can actually zoom in. You can zoom in as much as you need to. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but I try to trace the outline of their hair and everything for the best results. And by the way, if you stop in the middle of tracing, just like I did, that's totally fine. You can just pick right back up where you left off. And actually for best results, I encourage you to pick up your pencil every few seconds. That way, if you mess up, I'm going to mess up on purpose so I can show you. Just like that, you can just two finger tap and undo your last line rather than undoing the entire tracing process because that would be so painful if you got towards the end and then that's when you messed up, then you'd have to redo the whole thing. So we don't want that happening. Don't be alarmed if you see pixelation like this because that is totally normal for any image that's pixel based, which is pretty much all images. The more you zoom in, the more pixelated it'll appear. But as long as you can see the outlines, you should be good. I am having trouble seeing his shoes, so I'm just kind of guessing at this point where his shoes are. And see, I just messed up right there because this is actually his shoe and I didn't trace that, so I just did a little two finger tap and was able to go back to where I last picked up my pencil. I 
can't tell if that's his hair right there or if that's a shadow. Okay, so once you get to the end, you just have to come back and meet that original dot. And now you'll see all of these moving lines around him. And that is exactly what we want. So right after we've traced and we've met our ending line with our starting point, just come down here and select duplicate. So after you do that, you'll see some moving lines on the screen. To get rid of that, just double tap your arrow. And now we can go to our layers and we'll see that the whole photograph is still on layer number one. And then we have this new layer called from selection. Um, if I turn layer number one off, you'll see we just have his outline. So this is how I would add a background to this photograph. We're gonna turn off our selection temporarily. And then we're going to create a layer above layer number one. And we're gonna select a color. I'm gonna do yellow because we were going to dinner on vacation at the beach when this photograph was taken. So I feel like yellow is a good beachy color. And also because I think yellow will look good with his bright green shorts. And I'm gonna select a brush. I'm gonna use the bounce brush for my creative lettering pack. And I'm just gonna draw some lines. And since I turned off the selection, it's gonna look like I'm drawing lines over him, but we'll take care of that in just a minute. You can do any type of background, by the way. You don't have to draw lines. You could do hearts. You could draw like a really cool galaxy background if you wanted to. There are a lot of possibilities here. Just to keep this video short, I'm just showing you how to do a lined background because that's the quickest. Okay, so I got all of these lines drawn, so now I'm gonna duplicate that layer, and then I'm gonna select the duplicated layer by selecting my arrow, and I'm gonna select flip horizontal, and now I've got lines going in the other direction, so that makes for a really cool background. Now I'm gonna merge both of those layers together, and now with my pattern layer directly above the original photograph, I'm going to click on the pattern layer and select clipping mask. And now it got rid of all that extra stuff and it's just all over the picture. And now I'm gonna turn my selection back on and there he is. And then of course, if you want to write anything on the photograph, you could do that. Um, let's say I wanna match his shorts. I wanna match the brighter color. Oh, that's not bright enough. Um, I'm gonna select this color right here. And now I'm gonna write heartbreaker. And even with this writing, if I was putting this in my personal memory keeper, I would merge those two layers together and straighten them out just a little and bring them down here. Actually, I'd size them down quite a bit. And to make it really pop, uh, if you're in a situation like this where it shows up but it doesn't really pop the way that you want it to, you can just duplicate that layer, go to the bottom layer, the one that you just duplicated, change your color to white, select that bottom layer, select alpha lock, select fill layer, and then turn off alpha lock. And then select this layer by going to your arrow, turn on magnetics, and then just slowly move that over to the side and it makes it pop a little bit. You could also do a Gaussian blur, which I believe I show how to do in another video. So that is just one of the many ways that you can embellish your photographs. And I think it looks really, really cool. It's something that you could do with paper planning, but it would probably take five times as long. So super quick, super fun, and I hope this video really inspires you guys. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do all kinds of digital planning tutorials and digital plan with me videos. Check out my Patreon page, which I will link to down below, which is 
sort of like a digital planning club where you get all kinds of cool bonuses each month. Check out my Facebook group where you can share your planner spreads. You can share anything that you've created after you've watched any of my YouTube videos. You can ask questions. It's such a fun group. And check out my website, naptimealt.com, where there's tons of planner-related freebies that you can download now.